because our conscious awareness is such a fantastical mechanism that, see, the, the cosmos can't look at itself, right? It's just stuff following the rules of physics. But here, humans arise on this huge probability platform that cycles for over four billion years, and our brains are at the top of that platform. And when we look out at the cosmos, we are the cosmos seeing itself for yes. the first time. So it's, a f it's an amazing thing, because your consciousness looks back at its own origins. That creates what spiritual teachers call a non-dual union. Mm -hmm. But it's a different kind of non-dual union, not with sort of a, a psychic space or the space of, mm -hmm. of, of religious tradition or spiritual tradition. It's a non-dual union with the total emergence and evolution of life. Yes. And that's going to be a different kind of non-dual union yes. that's, that's broader, I think, because it's all-encompassing. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are at the Transformative Technology Conference, an incredible gathering of human beings. We have the opportunity and the great pleasure now of sitting down with Bruce Damer. Thank you. Thank you for coming on to our show. You're so welcome. Greatly appreciate yeah. it. And I'm so excited for this conversation. Bruce is a scientist who studies the origin of life at UC Santa Cruz and I love studying the origin of life, as you guys know, and also about the current state of life and where we're going in the future. So this is going to be, I'm super excited. So um, I want to, before we jump in to the, you know, to where you're kind of like currently really focused and passionate about, you know, tell me who the hell are you? How did you even get to who you are? How did I get here? Yeah. <laughs> After four billion years. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> I'm a kid from Canada, from British Columbia. And I was always dreamy. My mind was always going into the far future and back into the past. And I used to walk in nature all the time. And I dreamed up this stuff. And then read about Albert Einstein, who did the same thing. But he rode a bike around like a madman. And so that's how I thought all of science was done. So <laughs> I just led my life through thought experiments, the imagination sort of matrix. Yeah. And went through many lives and now I'm here I am 56 and right on schedule we came up with a potential solution for how life began on earth which was my dream when I was 14. Oh man okay so I love where you took me at the very beginning which was this kind of this uh, this young Bruce that just experientially like to learn through, uh, was it mostly alone and with nature? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that was the era of the first generation of Star Trek, which I got into. Later, later, Captain Kirk, William Shatner, beamed me out of my Cray supercomputer in my <laughs> computer museum and in uh, my barn. But um, I used to walk along and see the sagebrush as little oak trees and realize like I, I was like a commander and that I could create imaginal worlds, like civilizations that were down there. And then I made them in my imagination. Yeah. And I drew thousands of, of, of drawings, of illustrations of these worlds. So, because you're, we're all bored in school, right? So I, I just poured it out in, in these elaborate civilizations that I, I drew it. over years and years, yeah. Okay, I have to say, I have fallen in love with, uh, with Two words recently, uh, or the two words that make a th that make a field that I haven't even heard that exists really yet. It's universe design. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, um, a, yeah. a year ago or so, uh, my dreams all came true. Like we came up with a model for how life began through these cycling pools, hot spring pools. But at the same time, my other dream was how to give life a path into the cosmos, right? Because yeah. Earth is a womb, but it's a tomb, right? We've got to burst out. Yeah. 
and that's the other track that I've been working on. Yes. They both came yes. into realization in the same day in the two TEDx talks I, get, I did, yeah. parallel TEDx talks, morning and evening, and then the publication of the technical articles for how to nice. expand into space and how to yes. figure out how we began were published in the same I day in two, two different journals. And so I was walking up in Skyline here. I feel so much of me and you and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I asked, I asked you the field, <laughs> I asked the field, how could this all have come about in such a miraculously co-joined, perfectly timed process? And in my my ear came the voice, "Well, it's your universe. <laughs> it's your universe." So then I realized yeah. that each of us walks along with this brain case with neural connections that actually outnumber the countable particles in the cosmos, right? Our brains are deeply ramified matter that are bigger than the cosmos in the, at the countable level. And so when we walk around, we shape probability all around us, even though we're not aware of it. So our dreams become reality against all odds. And we are walking universes. Yeah. Yeah. I see it in your eye. <laughs> I'm so, I so want to ask you so many questions. There's so much to talk about. Um, I want to stay where you were just at, and then we can talk about the origin of life and the civilizational birthing from the womb. Um, okay, so where we were just at. Uh, tell us more about this, this we are each in our own universe. I think that because our conscious awareness is such a fantastical mechanism that, see, the, the cosmos can't look at itself, right? It's just stuff following the rules of physics. But here, humans arise on this huge probability platform that cycles for f over four billion years, and our brains are at the top of that platform. And when we look out at the cosmos, we are the cosmos seeing itself for yes. the first time. Yes. So, Many, you know, serious gearhead scientists actually have written about this. The, the cosmos became self-aware. Yes. Because we are self-aware and we're made of the cosmos. Yes. And so what does that really mean? What does that really mean? It, it means that uh, the, the cosmos itself is imaged and comes into reality, a different reality in your mind and in your network than in any other, right? Because, but you are such a large system. You have... 13 trillion cells, 100 trillion gut bacteria, and 14 quadrillion mitochondria that are spinning and making energy. So your system is immense. So compared to, say, the complexity of a galaxy, you totally outclass a galaxy in terms of the complexity, just you walking along. So as you walk along, the interconnected network of probabilities that are constantly working through your system and through evolution, through the biosphere, is so large that it, it's literally rendering a reality in real time, click, 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 mm -hmm. click, which is a reality of the cosmos itself. And as we as scientists start looking out in you know, the Hubble or the James Webb, it's just coming up where we'll actually see the ignition of the cosmos. Um, and somebody like me, whose mind is back in the Hadean era, rooting for progenian protocells to make it through the cycles. Now we have a, a model that's testing out in the field in, in actual hot springs. I'm rooting for them. My mind is back over four billion years ago mm -hmm. in their little protocellular world where they're not even able, able to divide, mm -hmm. but they're, they're going through cycles, combinatorial selection cycles, mm -hmm. and they're lifting into the first cellular life. And it's that birthing period where I live a lot of the time now. But my consciousness is in them. It's in them and it's cycling with them and it's, it's giving them the hopes and dreams. We know that they, it worked, but if you put yourself back 4.2 billion years ago, there was no guarantees mm -hmm. that life would actually emerge, yeah. lifted out of inanimate matter, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was the cosmos birthing a whole new layer through its clockwork mechanisms. You know, it's why it, probably why it came into existence. So it's, a f it's an amazing thing because your consciousness looks back at its own origins. That creates what spiritual teachers call a non-dual union. Mm -hmm. But it's a different kind of non-dual union, not with sort of a, a psychic space or the space of, mm -hmm. of, of religious tradition or spiritual tradition. It's a non-dual union with the total 
emergence and evolution of life. Yes. And that's going to be a different kind of non-dual union. Yes. That's that's broader, I think, because it's all encompassing. The origin of life is a non-dual union. And your conception of it. So when your mind opens to the largeness of the cosmos, it goes into the state of awe. When your mind looks down into cells and how complex the machinery is, but when your mind goes back to see the trials and tribulations of protocellular yes. life coming in, and you feel in your heart for it, yeah. that's a total union. That's total union. That's total union. And could I also say that when even when I look back just even uh, even a thousand, ten thousand at the birth of agriculture, when I look back uh, six million at the monkey to human transition, when I look back at the dinosaur, 65 million, mm. and this is all part of my heart, this is part of my yeah. soul, this is part of the mm. union yes. with life. It is. It re beautifully said. Yeah. 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 And there's, there's, there's just this, there's something that just makes me it does. It makes me cry because it, 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 I've been I've been obsessing over the 100 billion people that lived and died mm. before us today to mm. build this beautiful world yeah. we live in. Yeah. I've been obsessing about it so much that I've been writing about it and making clips about it, and I and I'm really excited to take take it to the next level soon. And I'm not in any rush to take it to the next level either because I want it to be. I wanted to take take time and do it the right way, and the the obsession of that has has drawn the deepest amounts of of empathy and great gratitude out of my soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think you you hit it. It's empathy and gratitude. That's the really the sole way we can connect with this, and that when we feel the gratitude, and we also are presented with the incredible chance that we even exist because rocky worlds don't hold their liquid water we now know this mars is an example i just came back from the mars 2020 landing site meetings where we're down to three sites now and last year i presented the case for where you would find life on mars based on a hot spring origin and then the escape of life down into the martian rock because the surface became uninhabitable, it became sterilizing. And so Mars died, maybe even as life started there. Venus went straight to a hothouse situation. And the Earth, by some miracle, held on to liquid oceans for three and a half billion years, long enough for complex life. That's no guarantee. We are a blessed result of fortuitous chance that is so extraordinary, you know, that that for me is like the ultimate gratitude and we may, there may be no alien civilizations within 50 parsecs of he, this place there may be nothing yeah. because yeah. as kepler looks at more yeah. exosolar systems we go oh my gosh we are so extraordinary mm -hmm. we are so rare and extraordinary mm -hmm. and it gives us like we may be alone effectively and and in, in that case the magnificence of what this is you know, and what each human being, from Donald Trump to the little baby, they're all extraordinary miracles yeah. of creation, all yeah. of them. Yeah. And if we look into our souls, the good news in the early 21st century is we now know how humans boot up as an operating system. We know tra trauma, you know, we have internal family systems, we have, you know, bra basically brain scans that show us how the brain works. We have tools like psychedelics, like meditation, like everything here, like yeah. Muse and uh, BioBeats, I just yeah. came from there. We have the most incredible tools to help us heal. Yeah. So we're not coming from parts, we're not coming from trauma. Yeah. So that we won't self-immolate. We won't destroy yeah. This, yeah. this world and destroy ourselves. And we've we finally got the boot codes for humans. Just in time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Just in time. Would you, would you say that on the other side of the, of the, the, of the traumas, uh, that are kind of they're generational in many mm. in many in many, many ways. ways. Yeah. yeah, that on the other side of that is the unity. That that and that it, yeah because there was you were talking about the incredible technologies that are here and almost all of the technologies that are at the transformative technology conference are about unity. 
Yeah, and in fact, Joe Hudson this morning, we did the, about an hour and a half of yeah. basically eye gazing between yes. completely strange people. Yeah. Joe is so skillful. We had him on the show, and he, uh, yeah, he, he answered my, my, I usually ask a couple questions at the end of the show, and he, he's the first person that, that ever so quickly, I ask the question, what's the most beautiful thing in the world? And he was just like, now. <laughs> 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 yeah, looking in each yeah. other's eyes right now, yeah. 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 And and, and I do, um, I I learned about that maybe like four or so years ago about the, the sh what, looking into someone's eyes for those long periods of time, there's no hate. No, no hate, not yeah. a drop of hate. Oh. And, and, uh, and then the, <clears throat> then the, the, the yeah, the, Profound, overwhelming sense of, of love and connection, and and then to replicate that uh, with other people, and then uh, Joe so gratefully does his uh, does his and workshops. he's and he's bringing it into business and finance and hardcore high tech, right? So you know, I look at these people that are at the tops of their games. We had uh, Kyle Kingsbury came over and uh, to do his podcast for On It. Mm -hmm. Right, this fantastic company that does learn about fats and brain health and everything. He's like WFC champion, like two, three things. And he's like the most testosterone driven guy, but he has so much love coming. He is so, he's an, like an avatar for the decent, beautiful human being, the beautiful man. And so is Joe Rogan. And, and these are the toughest fighters in our society. So these are guys in WFC that come in, you know, and look at what they are. Look at their, look at their power. Look at their hearts. And I told Kyle, Kyle uh, Kingsbury, I, I said, you are an avatar for some of the greatest hope in, in humanity, with you sitting here right there. And, and you, could, you could take my neck and wring it right, right now. I mean, you... There's so much power, there's power. the most body power, totally. but yeah. they're totally <laughs> integrated, beautiful humans, and they're the hope, yeah. you know. So they can face, yeah. they can face the traumatized power, because look at how powerful they are, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's, there's something about the, uh, it's just, it, it make, it makes me, it makes me cry because, uh, Joe, in many ways, is what 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 I would say um, one of, if not the leading um, interviewer um, of of our time. Yeah, and yeah. and it, and one who partakes in that many conversations with that many diverse leaders from around the world is inevitably going to become. A very intelligent, multidisciplinary yeah. mind, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I. Th that's why I am also doing this. That's why you're doing this, yeah. 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 And it's the golden age of, of this work, yes. and you're in the middle of it, and yes, and you. Earth needs stewardship. Yeah. And and I'm and I'm, I'm pro I'm going to propel that as 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 best as I can. Um, and it needs yeah. new public intellectuals new public from intellectuals. all exactly. branches that. Yeah. Are fearless. Our not, tagline is rebirthing the public intellectual. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just met on the out, just for your listeners and viewers, the kind of people that are here. So James Hanusa was walking in, yeah. and we talked and talked about another powerful public intellectual with Digital Rain and yeah. the Esalen programs they're doing and all the programs. Yeah. They're everywhere. They're just walking around here. And, yeah. you know, Silicon Valley and other places are powering up the new public intellectual. And they're fearless. And they're fearless because they've faced their own demons. They've done medicine journeys which would, you know, strip the, the paint off of <laughs> most of us. <laughs> so they faced, they faced harsher fears than, yeah. than you can in, say, a boardroom or in a political office. So yeah. it's like, what, what faces them? Nothing. Nothing. They care about the future of this, the human enterprise, this experiment. Yeah. And they're here. It, yeah. We're gonna make it. I, I have no doubt. We we've yeah. got the we've got the dream team, we've got the cohort yeah. to do this thing. And I, I meet them all over the world. I'm traveling all over the yeah. world talking about how life began and here's a, a here's a big one for you for a public intellectual. 
this is going to be as powerful for the 2020s as relativity was for the 1920s. Okay. So Einstein, um, his general special relativity were proven by the eclipse of 1919 when Mercury's light, well actually not Mercury, it was a, a star light was bent around the sun. And so he was sponsored on a tour of America in 1921 with Charlie Chaplin. And he became the first scientific rock star with his funny hair and Charlie Chaplin. And he didn't know what was going on, but he was good for the camera, right? So in, this is the beginning of media. Short films, uh, film was booming. Yeah. The 1920s was the most modernizing decade until the 60s uh, in the 20th century. So you had uh, the rise of, 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 of uh, electronic training, trading, radio, consumerism, women's lib. It was an incredible decade. Yeah. New literature, new theater, fascism rose. Yeah. The post-kingship world just exploded. Yeah. And what rolled that from science was the theory of relativity. That there was no base. Everything's relative to everything else. Everything is changing. Even time is, is, is variant. And I believe that our origin of life model, where we're empirically showing that life started from a community, not an individual, is such a powerful change. It's a powerful role for the 2020s. So what we're actually, we believe we're going to be able to show is that an individual little protocell at the beginning is too wobbly and doesn't have enough molecular functions to do anything. It falls apart. But in a clump, in a sludge, in a, what's called the progenote, it is the unit of selection. So the roots of the tree of life is not individuals, it's a community. So our, our, we came from a community complex in collaboration. That's a big change. Yeah. And so there was a, a term coined by Herbert Spencer in the 19th century that uh, survival of the fittest, right? We all know it. And uh, Charles Darwin was sort of browbeaten to put it in the third volume of, of his great book, Into the Origin of Species. And he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, he used natural selection. So the yeah. survival of the fittest came into the, the language and the culture as a very Victorian term, you know, who are the fittest? The white Victorians, you know, the brown people aren't, etc. And it was used to justify death, uh, pogroms, genocides in the 20th century called social Darwinism, right? We have the chance now of rolling survival of the fittest out of our lexicon, out of our culture, because we started as a collaborative community and our bodies are collaborative communities, our cities, everything is a collaborative community but the isolation created by that term of I must defend myself and win against all, all others uh, is destructive. The separation, the stories of separation, the fake news, the, the panic, right? That's the crux point that we're at. But out of science, out of hardcore reduction of science, we'll roll this realization like seeing the Earth from space in Apollo 8. Uh, overview effect. Overview effect. This little sludge growing in the bottom of a dish that's evolving and scientists, you know, in lab coats, pointing to it and said, this is a putative way that life began on Earth and it's a community. We started from a community, not an individual. And that'll, pow that'll power its way into the culture in a beautiful way. And I'm hoping it's the 2020s in honor of yeah. Einstein's 1921 yeah. you know, emergence. Yeah. <laughs> when you first started talking about uh, Einstein and Chaplin, I was thinking about, like, what would it look like to have a... Uh, like just hardcore scientists with hardcore entertainer, you know, on on stage, playing, 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 dancing, having yeah. fun, and teaching. And what would what would that look like in this new age of media? And then I also, as as you were talking, and that's about, what we're doing, by the way. Yeah, I've been doing these shows with um, DJs and dancers, and uh, one of the, the uh, we uh, created this with Android Jones. So Android Jones did our first show. We did it at Lightning in a Bottle on uh, huge screens, and yeah. he was doing live painting. And then we did oh. shows all last year, and the, in the temp, the Burning Man uh, pyramid, the Playa Alchemist last year. And what are you doing at the live shows together? Painting, you said. What I do is literally we set it up so there's fantastic music uh, written by DJ Dissolve, uh -huh. 
and has DJ Dissolve. DJ, DJ Dissolve, Al Santana. And they do it, and he plays live violin to invoke what's coming. And the whole place goes, we did this at the Sand, Saturday Night Sand show last year. We, were, we did this there. So then comes, uh, in, in that show, Samantha came and gave the invocation. And then Jasmine came, was a fantastic dancer. So she danced the energies up and then I then the album goes quiet and then there's a, a thunderclap and I walk out and I'm wearing my my wizard whatever I'm doing and I come out I'm lit beautifully and then the VJ starts to do the visuals and then I look at the audience and I start in and the story is range from where we came from to where we're going yeah and they're all they're all tuned to a 23 year old kind of millennial yeah. audience but it yeah. generally works for everyone yeah you know, in the festival scene or at burning man where there's a lot of distractions yeah. to hold that audience so that yeah. i've been doing that now for two years oh, as sweet. a show yeah sweet so any Thank of your your viewers want to have a performance and that's an example what is the name of this performance that occurs Ah, the name of the, we, we have a different name every time. Cool. Uh, the troupe is called Wizard's Light. Wizard's Light? Wizard's Light. <laughs> that could be L-I-G-H-T, yeah. the, the light of inspiration or whatever, or Wizard's L-I-T-E, -E, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit funny, funny. and a little bit, you yeah. know, non-serious. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, we, the one we did two years ago is called Fire in the Sky. Because it turns out that everything in our history has been started with a fire in the sky. The sun. The cosmos, the sun, then the volcanoes, volcanoes that pushed yeah. up through the oceans that yeah. made the landscapes yes. to cycle yes. the origin pools. Yes. And then you had these other fires that were from the sky into the mind. So you had the asteroid impact that was a fire yes. in the sky that yes. pushed evolution. Well, yeah, we wouldn't be here. And then the prosimians, the little two inch ancestors of all apes and monkeys, their fire in the sky was the dawn over the rainforest where they were creeping out on the limb to try to get tree sap and berries and they were getting snapped down by snakes. Yeah. And that's what gave us our visual cortex that gave us a, our ability to, to see phones and patterns it's 50, 60 million years, years of snake yes. snapping or not snapping. That's why we are the way we are. It's because of the, 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 the constant evolution with, with snakes and serpents. Yeah, yeah, and then that, the snakes and serpents were from the o ocean creatures also had light or no light to, yeah. yeah. Light then, or no light, yeah. yeah. And then when we discovered fire, you know, uh, when Africa split in half and we had to make fire to, to cook meat, mm -hmm. to be able to digest it, because mm -hmm. that was our food source. Yeah. And then, of course, the fire, the light of civilization, you know, that came through. And then Alamogordo, the yeah. fire of Trinity, you know, and that we didn't get consumed by that. We didn't self-immolate. And now the light has turned on back. The Eleusinian mystery brought the Eleusinian potions of LSD and, mm -hmm. and mushrooms back into human consciousness right up here in SF you know, in the 60s, and it's, it's now rolled through to, to re-enlighten the human intellect and the human healing of the soul. So that light turned on again, and then the turning on of the light of the internet, of, of our cyber being that we've fashioned, <laughs> that lights up every face, you know, constantly. Yeah. Yes. You know, and that's a new form of a serpent that either co can coil around you and take all your prana, yeah. but it also evolves us. It so does, yeah. the serpent is back looking at us through our smartphones. Yes. You know, and maybe VR. Yes. And then we're being pushed and pushed and pushed again. Yeah. So that's that's my story tomorrow, actually, the talk. I'll it tell is? the story oh, yes. on stage tomorrow yes. morning, yes. yes. Oh, these wizard lights, we have so much to explore because there's a lot to to tell. There's a lot to story tell. And yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I was in yeah. New Zealand recently doing these hot spring experiments and I flew down to Wellington because mm -hmm. I was invited by this fellow named Sir Richard Taylor mm -hmm. to go through Weta workshop. So it's where they made Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. and The Hobbit. They made 50 other films, Blade Runner 2049 and mm -hmm. everything. So it's the world's greatest physical set construction costumery studio. 
Mm. So for three hours they gave me a tour of how they made make everything. Then at the end they handed me Gandalf's sword. So I have it. I can send you a picture of this <laughs> glam drink. Yeah. And the sword masters on one side and Richard Taylor's on the other side. And he declared me to be a young budding like a Gandalf the Graying. So I've now taken that role on, and I'm actually now building Gandalf's house and my property here in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Oh my God! With their help. Yeah. So we're going to Thailand to get Thai artists to make copies. There's, they've sent us thousands of, of pictures from the Lord of the Rings and drawings, artists' original renderings, so we can get the Gandalf's house looking like Gandalf's house would be. And Gandalf didn't have a house. But we all got together and figured he deserved one, and this is what it would look like. So this time next year, you can come, you know, come and we can interview there. An on-site interview would be super fun. In, yeah. in Gandalf's in house. In Gandalf's house. In Gandalf's house, yeah. Wow. So that's my wizard's light, you know, for the rest of my life will be in there. Wizard's light is, is like the... It's the it's the synthesis of of life that that delivers inspiration to the souls of others. And that's a lot of what I aim to do with the art and creativity that I am aiming to manifest now. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that's really exciting, and I'm ex I'm, I'm looking forward to the, are, the, are there videos on the internet that we can link in the in the bio of it. There's, yeah, Damer.com will have the, the two Perfect. TEDx talks, Perfect. Opening of Space and The Origin of Life, and there's, there's a lot of stuff out there now, because I've been just touring for years now. There's tons of your talks. Tons of my talks. Awesome. And Links in the bio, Damer.com. And the Levity Zone podcast, which is my own personal diary of this journey, and levityzone.org. And Sweet. It, that came one night in a conversation with Terrence McKenna, nice. who you probably know from back in the day. Yeah. But Terrence used to talk about novelty all the time, novelty curves and singularities and stuff. Yeah. And one night I said to him, Terrence, we have enough novelty, we need more levity. <laughs> so that's why we, our civilization needs to feel better about itself and see itself in more levity and more light, more humor, yeah. you know, not be doom and gloom. And so that's what the, the podcast is, is about. Yeah. Yeah. And so that levity and light and inspiration can be creatively delivered in so many ways. And I find things like the hundred billion that have lived and died before us today to build this world to mm. be something that I'm just extremely passionate about. Mm. You find the last four billion years to be extremely passionate. I do too. Um, and a proper synthesis of, of that to a a point today which increases the amount of levity is so gorgeous. Okay, here's the other thing that I wanted uh, to bring up from what from where you were speaking, and I'm ex I'm excited to hear what you have to say about this. The <clears throat> I've had I've had a decent amount of contemplations around the about about uh, about evolution and about natural selection, and there. It seems to me from the more that I look at it, the more I realize that the proper uh, integration of, 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 all, of all humans into humanity rather than dehumanization. Mm. Uh, so it's not, I am intelligent, therefore you are inferior, therefore I advance and you die. Mm. Uh, that is old school. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. old school. The new school is, I, I, the the new school is. We are now evolving with the w evolution is now evolving to select for altruism, mm -hmm. and the ones the ones that choose to be most altruistic, and assist in the. In the long term sustainable development of of society as every human is a different color on the color wheel, not a significant, because uh, it's so weird putting things on like an IQ bell curve and then saying like, oh, we're just all different colors, right? Because they're just, those things are so strange to say in the same thing, mm -hmm. same phrase. Yeah. 
So, yeah, there's a way of this? seeing this. Yes. So here's a simple way of seeing this. So here you have a field of little entities that are competing somewhat for resources. Generally, for most of uh, the history of life on Earth, they're in a con what's called a consortium. Mm -hmm. That's the model for microbial communities, yes. the consortium model. They kind of compete, but they also, you know, the top layer distribute sunlight, the products of sunlight, down to the lower layers, and they're, they're in layers. And so the community evolves as a unit. But then what happens is a grid or a pressure comes slapping down on that community and kills most of it. And that's the process of natural selection. A few members climb up through and they're tough enough to survive the new conditions, whether it be more drying, higher ultraviolet radiation, or something, or lack of resources. And then they, they scramble together and they repopulate the, on top of the grid. And then another grid comes slamming down and then they climb again. And in a dream one night, I was shown this. And the, the entity in the dream said, this is how you were made. And it is more like lifting and gifting. So you lift up the polymeric, the beautiful polymeric products that'll allow you to survive that, that you are somehow given. Yeah. Sometimes by random chance. Yeah. Sometimes by consortia action. Yeah. Yeah. And then you gift it to the next level that then survive on the desert island. Yes. And then some other entity or other future group is going to go that next step, climb that ne in that next hill climb. That's actually the process that made us. And it's seen from a completely different perspective. So individuals lift themselves into their best abilities and they give to the next generation. And that's how all of human civilization, successful civilizations have been built. Because a civilization invented brick making or maybe the the Chinese invented a whole lot of technology and then maybe China fell because of wars and plagues and things. And a little bit of that invention came, writing or paper making came to Europe. And then the Europeans invented something else that then Europe then fell. And this is this whole thing. And that's actually how we were made. And survival of the fittest is nowhere in there. And I was told by the entity, mm -hmm. this term, survival of the fittest, is killing your civilization and killing this world. You must replace it. Because this is the actual mechanism that made you. Mm -hmm. You got the mechanism right, but the language is wrong. And it's very mm -hmm. important to, to mm -hmm. change that out, which is exactly what you were coming to. And rather than survival of the fittest, it is lifting and, and gifting. Gift and gifting. Yeah, lifting and gifting. New metaphor. Yeah, new metaphor. Yeah. yeah, and so all of us in our lives are, are doing that, where we make our children, right? We try to give to our children the next, yes. those, the, the best tools. And we, we in the healing arts, we're, we're, lift, we're constantly lifting and gifting. And then where does the, where does the, where does the, where, where are the parameters of children for each individual? Because some people think it's the earth. Some people think it's their family, yeah. it's the community. Where is it? Where is it? I think it's the family? whole thing. So yeah. if you raise a child that doesn't, isn't fraught by traumas, or if a child experiences a traumatic experience early on, they're extremely uh, flexible, plastic. They can go through healing quickly. So if we give them those tools, like this is why schoolyard bullying is ending, thank goodness, because look at what it did. Right? But certain kinds of parenting that are very demanding. So the tiger, tiger parenting is extremely damaging to children. Yeah. Right? So it's called bulldozer parenting now. Bulldozer parenting. <laughs> because they just go through and bulldoze all the obstacles for the child so that the child has no, no. Ob no obstacles in its way. Of, of so we, we create, I, we create a different kind of human that way. Totally. So, but we're at least now self-aware that we're doing damage to the next generation. Um, perhaps them getting technology too soon is changing their brain chemistry because of all the dopamine. So, yes. but we at least are self-aware of the risks that we're running, whereas in past generations it just sort of happened and nobody paid any attention. Um, so society becoming mm. self-aware, mm. ah, this could give us real problems. Interesting, we're becoming more self-aware of what we are building. We now have a better connected 
communications infrastructure to have more of those yeah. harder conversations. And, and parents, like the, the suicides in Palo Alto here, like a, a dozen young people jumping onto Caltrain tracks from upper middle class privileged families because why? No love. Hard driving, rigid kind of parenting drove these young people to take their lives. Now, of course, what did the community do? It built a fence and put a security guard. That's not a good response. But another part of the community was like, we have to own this, that we are destroying our young people through this dr crazy mania of driving them for performance. And there's no yeah. love. They feel nothing. And they don't know. They don't know that they're running a deficit. They just go fall into dark depression. And they take their lives on the railroad tracks in Palo Alto. That's a strong message. That's already the top. 0.1% on the planet yeah. of wealth. And, and look what, what we were doing. So we're making huge mistakes. But I think that, you know, here's Transtech in the heart of Palo Alto. This kind of thing is happening in Palo Alto. I think Palo Alto, people are smart enough to say, we've just made a huge mistake. We, yeah. we must have a community meeting and there will be emotion, there will be feeling and passion. Yeah. And we found out it is actually unhealthy to drive a young person so hard. But society told us, well, they need to get through Stanford or Ivy League, and they need to be this way and have five appointments a day. And we found out that's actually not, not right. Yeah. Uh, that we need to pull back from that. Yeah. So before it would just be done, and now there's awareness of that, and there's open people feel safe enough to have that conversation. That's a big change, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Oof. That's right. a heavy one. That's a really heavy one. <laughs> but yeah. we're sitting in the heart well, of it the, right the, here. Well, the, the what's going on with the um, with with the Rohingyans as well is heavy. You know, that's over a million people now are having moved to Bangladesh from Myanmar, and that's oh, is that yeah, oh my yeah. God. So that's mass, that that yeah. camp that you, uh, that refugee camp is quickly over <coughs> became the largest in the world, hmm. and just. Like that, like that. Yeah. and and um, yeah. <clears throat> so you know, here's so here's, here's it's, a, it's a big, you know, it's it's crazy because the, w w you know, how does one determine? Okay, twelve people, um, uh, top point one percent is a certain color. Then there's the million plus mo being uh, displaced to uh, Bangladesh. That's a significant amount more people, but they are not 40 miles away from us, and mm -hmm. that's a different color. So, where do resources go? How do resources properly get funneled down the hierarchy to those in those, need? Yeah, and, and I think the more that people feel the pain, like that they they don't just gloss over and get the instant news feed, and they feel the pain of those others. The more yeah. human we are Done. going to become, and that. Through the heart, like, like Joe was saying, if, if you feel it deeply in your heart, you can make it real. That's a big change for entrepreneurship and yeah. for any kind of, and the, the way I see it is, I, I give this metaphor all the time. When people get, lose hope, say there's a hand that's moving up and it's the visible hand of crazy news and uh, whatever, you know, it's the hand of sort of, in, in a way it's like Darth Vader. <laughs> But then there's the Jedi. There's like Luke moving up here, and it's mostly hidden. And so the tools and yeah. what's being done here in Transtech is part of this hand. And they're co-evolving. They're pushing, they push against each other. So this hand of craziness and darkness and trauma needs to have that other one to push against for it to rise. And they're co-evolving. And the millennials yeah. I talk to see both of them. Yeah. They see them clearly. Yeah. And they jump back and forth. You know, they had childhoods <laughs> where they saw trauma here and they see powerful, loving things here. Yeah. And they're like in the middle of it. They're yeah. riding it. And it's just pushing, pushing, yeah. pushing. And it's just evolution at work. And so one of the things Master Yoda said in Star Wars, uh, this is our, maybe a good place to end, was that he said something like, Jedi need powerful empire, develop skills. So that we, we need that, we need something to work against, right? So there are all these magic people, powerful people, powerful technologists, heartfelt people that 
art-filled people, um, they need that force to evolve and grow. And as they grow more and more powerful, that force grows powerful, we need something to evolve against. And eventually it will merge, it will dissolve into one thing. And our trauma will be met and we'll be healed as a, as a species. And, and we'll make it. And no matter what climate, you know, the planet's gonna throw us, we're going to make it. Because we're, we've been through that mesh so many times and we've lifted and we've kept gifting and lifting and gifting and gifting until we, we just make it, we just, we break out and we come into this union. You know, it'll be like childhood's end, you know, Arthur C. Clarke and so it's happening, you know. And, uh, I just have complete faith in that this is going where it should because we're so rare that for the cosmos, like we're the one shot in this little parsec here. And so there's a lot at stake. And there's a lot more in the game that, than we can see, than we can sense. Yes. The, the roots that reach down to hell are able to sprout the leaves that reach out to heaven. That's, that's great. That's a good one as well. I like the... Need it all, yeah. Yeah, I, I, like, I like the way you explain the light and the dark. and <clears throat> It can definitely be destabilizing a lot to bounce back and forth through the two. And you've got to have strong community around you to be yeah. able to help um, ground. And, and, and you know yourself well because each of us has those hands inside. We all have that. So when we see it in society, oh yeah, there's societal trauma, just like my trauma. Yeah. And then you yeah. soften to it and you, you open with empathy. Mm -hmm. Ah, societal trauma. And face it directly. And it, it, societal trauma is our trauma. Yeah. Yeah. What are the forces at play on Earth that are hyperdimensional? I think us. <laughs> Are they, are they through, is it through us or are we, are we not, are we, is consciousness localized here in this vehicle? Is there a soul that comes through this vehicle? What are, what are your thoughts about I that? I think it's a huge interconnected mesh that we can't see but we can feel. Mm. So we can't know it intellectually mm. but we can feel it and operate with it. Uh -huh. So for example, uh, what I do when I come to a conference like this is I kind of let myself be taken over by that. Mm -hmm. So I don't go somewhere because I think it's a good idea to go sit at that table. I get moved by this feel, like my body's slow. Oh, I'm just slowing down. Oh, I'm stopping. Oh, I'm standing here. And then suddenly I'm standing next to this person yeah. who is incredibly important to my mission. To talk. But I'm not figuring it out. I'm literally, be, I'm like a, like a string puppet. Yes. In that mode, just being moved around because I, I'm a faithful instrument of the field mm -hmm. for our survival. That's that's how I've led my life. Interesting. Yeah. Faithful instrument of the field for our survival. For our survival, because yeah. it's it's doing this chess move like. Yeah. Okay, you know, for the monkeys to. <laughs> yeah. To get through, we need to do this, 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 and this, and yes. and they're highly improbable events being brought into actuality yes. by this yes. the sheer magnitude of what this probabilistic field is. Yeah. And you can test it. You can actually, you can walk out the door one day and say, I'm just going to be in a negative state and I'm going to be thinking and worrying all day. And watch how it shakes your, the field, right? All the people you work to deal with at the grocery store and when you're driving and everything. And then you go out the next day and it's like, I'm going to do breath work. I'm going to get really clear. I'm going to, you know, make love. And I'm going to go out and I'm just going to be in a state of gratitude and warmth and love to everyone I meet. And watch how that shapes the field. It's totally. like so different. And so different. You could just do scientific A-B testing on this yeah, thing. On your, own, yeah. on your own life. Yeah. yeah. That is a really easy action item. Uh, as long as people can stick to it, it's a conscientiousness thing. You gotta hold that contract with yourself to, to be negative or be upset or all these lower vibrational and, feelings. And if they are, they're a part of you that was hurt a long time ago. Yeah. And then you give that love. And then you give that love. Yeah. 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 And it's coming up, it's like, but, 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 but. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is a lot more to unpack. And <laughs> there is, it's, this is hopefully 
one of many times that we sit down together. I want um, a quick dose into, uh, you kind of brought it up a couple times, but uh, the future of, mm. yeah, with, you, 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 you're very optimistic and but, but realistic as well about what, what is going on. And um, even with exponential technology, even with mm -hmm. what we're seeing, well, I think that it, it's all coming together quite perfectly. So, you know, if you look back uh, at the year 1990, on the verge of the collapse of the superpowers, potential thermonuclear war, mm -hmm. <clears throat> 1970, a uh, crazy world, just nobody knew where anything was. 1950, uh, the world was half devastated by World War II. 1930, we're coming into a terrible uh, depression. 1910, we're coming into the first trench, like first mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. human machine war. Those were not good times. No. So I saw an image of, of Pearl Harbor being bombed, and I was just like, ugh, or, you know, Hiroshima Nagasaki, ugh, like, yeah, not so good. So roll to yeah. 2010. 2010, okay. Whoa. Everyone's getting connected. The nuclear weapons have been set down for the time. We went through the nightmare of 9-11 and all that nonsense, which was really a holdover from, you know, a really primitive way of thinking on both sides. 2010, the smartphone arrives, the world's interconnected. We have our local challenges, but 2010 was the first sort of dodecadal year where, according to all measures, it was 2010 to 2013 were the peak of human health and interconnectedness. I think 2013 was seen as like the absolute, humans had never had it so good as far as health and opportunities and uh, there was less violence because the, the amount of global violence has been dropping substantially and it's amazing. And so we're in this decade and we have the craziness, we have the traumas, we have refugee camps as you, you pointed out, but we have something else. We have this powerful new connectedness that we've never had as a species and the understanding of the boot codes of humans, the most powerful tools we've ever had for healing, you know, from psychedelics to all the, the ex, you know, endogenous tools and um, s the ability to tell ourselves our story we have everything we, we need to go forward. We really do. Mm -hmm. There isn't one great existential external nightmare, a Damocles sword hanging over us like there has been for the last hundred years. There really has been. It's not there. You know, we can make it up. We can make a new one in our heads and say, oh, that's our new Damocles sword. Mm -hmm. But it, there is nothing like there was in those decades. It's such a better world right now. Yes, and there are still w weaponry that can be accessed mm -hmm. even easier and even more varied ways, mm -hmm. which requires a lot of civilization figuring out. But how we're, to s we're self aware, you know. Anyone yeah. with a smartphone can take a video of anything and we know about it unfiltered. And that's an amazingly powerful, like. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, just like instant. Great powers used to be able to, to hold secrets, and they can't. Corporations can't hold secrets. Everything is, everything is an open face. It's an amazing mm -hmm. time. It's never, this has never been before. Mm -hmm. St and stuff changes so fast and rolls. The system, the financial system rolls. Cryptocurrency, you know, replacing fiat, and then crashes, and a new one comes, and a new one. And this, the serpent of civilization is undulating so rapidly that no one can control it. There's no one driving. It just throws people off, yeah. and it is on a move. Yeah. And so yeah. the, the meta beings of the millennials and people like yourself are like, yeah, we know this, this dynamic of this continuous flow. Yeah, we live in this flow. You know, we're not, we don't have a tight grip on tight grip the on. old. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a very interesting time to be alive on the planet, and I wonder if we used to say those same words every time period <laughs> beforehand. We always, you go back to the year 1000 where they were worried about the, the millennia, the, you know, the, was it we had the Y2K, they had the Y1K problem. Yeah. 
<coughs> that no one had a st standard calendar, so nobody knew when Y1K was. And in the 900s, there was this apocalyptic thing yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, it seems to be especially in the the European soul needs the apocalypse to motivate it to go forward. <laughs> Whereas in South Asia, you find that no, it's it's a regenerative cycling system. It's very cultural, you know. Wow, um, there's so much more to unpack soon. Um, the uh, uh, wizard's light. <laughs> um, and, and we'll finish with another Master Yoda. Yeah. So another Master Yoda was Luke meets his father, who is Darth Vader. Darth Vader asks Luke, take off this mask. What happened? Luke sees the gentle, pained eyes of Darth, and there is a healing of the Empire. Yeah. Yeah, it happened. Yeah. And that's when those forces come yeah, They did, yeah, perfectly. And then? They did, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the stories told by, in the Bay Area. That's a great story we tell humanity made right here in the Bay Area, yeah, that everyone knows, <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. You're so welcome. Thank you. I'm grateful to be meet you, and we'll do this again. Thank you, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing and for everything that you're teaching. Thanks. Everything you're bringing yeah. forward. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. We would love for you to comment below with your thoughts. We'd love to continue the conversation. We have a, a public telegram that you can join and ask questions about the show. Also, go and build the future. Go and manifest your dreams into the world. Go and execute. Go and build. Go create. Much love for you all. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>